Welcome to the Average Australian Podcast. Oh, what a fabulous rally from Tim Cahill. You will not see a better goal than that at the World Cup this summer. Oh, great save. save again by it's Schwarzer. Save. Cahill. Cahill. Tim Cahill has done it again. My drop for Fauna Roller. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Average Australian Football Podcast. I hope you are all well. We are here once again to review round 18 of the A-League and preview round 19. There will of course be sections on all our favourite topics, i.e. the FFA, and some EPL thrown in as well. Now if a podcast is going to mention the FFA at all, no matter the context, there is just one man you bring on, and that is of course Eden, FFA's most loyal supporter. With That's that right. said, he's the man of the hour. Eden, welcome back. How's hey, you how you doing? I'm doing good, man, doing good. Good surviving the Sydney storms, so yeah. All What's good. happening over there? I don't know. It's gone crazy. One minute it's forty two degrees and and red hot, and the next minute it's flash flooding and thunderstorms and houses collapsing and wow, you know, it's just chaos. It's chaos at the moment. I tell you, it's a like a form of a few football clubs in the world. Um, that's right, just crumbling, down. crumbling, <laughs> crumbling. The the foundation is crumbling. Let Let's start right at the top. Um, we, we, we spoke last week about FIFA, the FFA wanting to meet with them in uh, Switzerland, try to prolong the, um, forced restructuring of their footballing body of yeah. their um, representation. Now I'm not a fan of FIFA in any stretch of the imagination. I despise them, mm-hmm. but if a corrupt organization have to tell you to get lost, I think that is a beautiful irony. Yeah, wow. I mean, and that's that's exactly how I've been thinking the same thing. You know, I'm like, you know, FIFA are, are, are dodgy as, as all hell. Um, really but in, in this case, they're actually right. So how bad is that for the FFA? <laughs> um, yeah, what can you say? Um, what, what did you make of it all? Um, it had to happen. Like, as I said, I think if, if there was a delay, I think that itself was enough to have like a blowout from the, um, F, uh, the A-League clubs. Mm. And, um, you know, especially with, like, um, Australia getting in another sport with, like, the women's AFL and the A-League sort of is floating a little bit, I think. Um, it yep. hasn't gone up that next level that it needs to. And I think that next level is expansion. And that itself is being very quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, the FFA only seem to be able to focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. So now that this restructuring is happening, I think that's going to make the um, expansion happen quicker. Yep. So I mean, it's a positive there, but it just the um the expansion of the um, representation needs to just happen, and then the uh, expansion talks need to be the center stage, like the the only focus. Yeah. I mean, here's my question: Why did they have to fly to Zurich to to f- meet with the with FIFA to just go? Oh, hey, do, did you guys really mean all that stuff you said? Yeah, we did. Okay, see you later. We're just gonna fly back to Australia now. Thanks for the update. Because I think the money in the briefcase looked better in person. Yeah, right. Okay. Than just so, like a digital check. They're like, have you seen this? It's like, well, <laughs> hang on. From the briefcase. You, when, you've got, when you've got Russia, Qatar, who knows who else bribing them, probably every country in the world, where well, you think Australia can live up to those kind of bribes <laughs> for FIFA? They're like, well, look, you, that you money looks so. nice. It's good. But how about just get lost and do it? Because. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're no match for the other bribes we've got going on at the moment. So That's probably what happened, to be fair. But look, I mean, in all, in all seriousness, why did they fly over there? Like, that, like, all right, my blood's starting to boil already, man. Watch out. I'm going to just, my head's going to spin in a sec. Why did they fly over there? As Do, cynical w- what as a it scam. sounds. What a scam. Yeah. As, cyn- as cynical as it sounds like, I think they're just there to make it harder to say no. Well, like if they're in person, then it's harder to reject someone. Like, but but I mean, and that just goes to the crux of the issue. Why are they trying to stall this? Why are they trying to delay this? It's it's a damning report from FIFA saying like your your federation is dodgy. It's dodgy. The elections were rigged. There's no representation. It's one of the least rep. It, it is the least representative. That, that's the part that blows me away. Yeah. The- there's African like FAs that are corrupt. Like they've yeah. been proven to be under like FIFA's you know, corruption with the um the United States leading the charge. And like it just blows my mind that Australia of all places can't be properly represented. And and this is and then the second takeaway from this is if if not only now did FIFA confirm that yes all this needs to be done by the due date, but do you know what the penalty is if they don't get it done? 
the FFA Australia could be um, suspended. expelled, suspended yeah. from FIFA. Yeah, like, like no international competition. Like that that happens to countries like Iraq or, or <laughs> like you in said, war. Zim- yes, yes, in, in war. It's it's when there's like corruption in the federation or there's um you know civil unrest yeah. or, or the other one that they don't like is like government meddling within the federation and things like that. So okay. I mean, this happens to like the dodgiest countries in the world, right? And now these idiots at FFA instead of working on this plan for the last two months or whenever it was that FIFA visited, they're trying to employ stalling tactics that are putting Australia's representation at the World Cup, Confederations Cup, Champions League, Asian Cup, all this sort of stuff in jeopardy because they're too stupid and lazy and slow to get anything done. Like, that just really makes my blood boil. I can't believe it. It's frustrating because, like, I don't think it's even getting covered, like, internationally. I think this is so quiet and it should be, like, the main, like, focus of conversation. And it seems to be, like, swept under the rug. Like, I'm on Twitter pretty heavy. Like, I I follow a lot of Australian and international football journalists and all that. And I have barely seen it mentioned. That's a good point. Like, where's the heat from the journos on this? I don't Um, see it. Because this is this is huge, I think. Like, if I they, think so too. They've got until March or whatever to get this like implemented or ratified or at least have a plan and for a, or whatever. A big it is. organization that is not a long time. Well, and not only that, but like like I said, the the Australian national team, the Socceroos, Australia has worked so hard to build football up from like the debacle of the NSL and all that sort of stuff. They've reinvigorated the whole brand. The Socceroos are super popular. We won the Asian Cup. We've been in World Cups. Soccer is back. Football is back. The Socceroos are back. They're putting everything in jeopardy. Well, Confederations Cup next year. Exactly. I mean, that is like the, the first thing that's going to go if like they don't sort this out. They're putting it in jeopardy for their own little petty things just so Lowy's son can run the FFA. Like, yeah. get real. Like, it's, it's, I'm sorry, but it's over. Like, it's it just <laughs> over. Like, the, the days of, and like I said, guys like, um, uh, Tony Sage at the Perth Glory, he will be jumping for joy when this gets implemented because the days are over. Oh, Western Sydney Wanderers won Eduardo. Oh, no, you can't have him. Too bad. Like, do you think, like, situations like that will completely stop now? Do you think, I think they'll so. just, yeah? I think so. I think eventually what's going to happen is that the clubs are going to push for, the scrapping of the salary cap. Like, essentially, that's the end goal. The scrapping of the salary cap and just the ending of all these stupid arbitrary rules from the FFA. Oh, you can have this player, but you can't have that player and this and that. Like, it's it's over. Like, their, their stranglehold on it is over. And eventually, it's going to have to be that, yeah, the, the, the scrapping of the salary cap, um, way more money into advertising and things like that as well. And just basically trying to run it like a professional competition. Well, FFA have done a great job up until now to go to the next level. We've got to go beyond them. It's as simple as that. The thing that, that interests me is like, how many votes is the A-League going to get? Because I think that is going to have a huge influence about the salary cap. I think it's going to have a huge influence about expansion. Yeah. Because like, they've only got the one vote right now. And if they get... See, I don't even know how you'd organize it. But if they get four or five, then the power they have compared to now is going to be astronomically different. Yeah, it ha- yeah, and I, I don't know how they're going to implement it, but obviously I guess they have to look at other models around the world and stuff yeah, like that. But so I'm not got- sure about that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how, but and that's another question that I'm guessing that they're going to have to come up with a plan and then they're going to have to probably show it to FIFA, right, and go, how does this look, and then get that approved. But the fact of the matter is the A-League needs more representation, women's football needs more representation, the referees – um, futsal, like junior clubs, grassroots Definitely. clubs, like everybody needs more representation. It can't just be these guys in, in suits in head office running the show when it's proven time and time again that they just, they haven't got a clue in, in some aspects. So I think like the clubs are, this is a win for the A-League, I think, and for the clubs. Um, even football in general in Australia, because like so. you look at the registration fees for like young kids, it's like higher than any sporting code in Australia. Like it's ridiculous. That's right. And the FFA is using those funds to fund the national team and things like that. Take um, trips to Switzerland. Yeah. And, and uh, it just brings me back. Why did they have to go to Switzerland? Like FIFA came here. They told you what to do. <laughs> 
end of story. Like who do like who do we think we are on the on the world Global stage of stage, football? Yeah. yeah, on the world stage of football, Australia are nothing. We're when FIFA, yeah, when FIFA tell you just do it, like you're not going to go over to Switzerland and convince them otherwise. Um, and especially, uh, like, and th- the other thing is, I wouldn't be pushing FIFA's buttons no. when we've got a league that doesn't have promotion and relegation that's demanded by FIFA. We've got a New Zealand club from a different confederation in our league <laughs> that's not supported by FIFA. Do you know what I mean? We've got a salary cap that's probably not really supported by, like, we've got so many different things and, like, FIFA are letting us, you know, giving us leeway on so many things. Like, don't push their buttons when they say give people, you know, give teams more um, votes. Just do it, and yeah. it's just you know. And like I said, the the I know for a fact that some of the owners you could see in the news reports and stuff they were fuming when FIFA went, you know, when FFA went to uh, on this trip. Like they were fuming. Um, and I just uh, wish it was covered more. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, where's where's the journalism? Where's the coverage? I reckon on this? if you like, if you interviewed and questioned, like, say, like twenty Australians, I bet you most wouldn't know that this has even happened. No, nah, nah. like you said, it's been it's. I think it's a massive to- uh, talking point, a massive topic, and th- there's some quality um, football journos around, but they, is, they don't yeah. seem to be digging around and, and covering it too much, and that's disappointing. Because um, yeah, I think this is huge and. Like way more questions need to be asked of the FFA about everything. Yep. They need to be put under the microscope about everything. So uh, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out now, and um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, let's let's let me just calm down a bit. We'll move <laughs> off. Let's let's talk about some football. Yeah, just fingers crossed that um you know March is not that long away, and I'm guessing we'll hear pretty soon what happens. And yeah. then, you know the big thing like going into the A League now is the expansion. Like, it's a massive I think important. So, yeah. Well, and step. like. Yeah, they said that supposedly sometime in February we're going to see the criteria for expansion. So, uh, well, hopefully, Who knows what that'll be. Yeah, yeah. well, let's see when they can pull that rabbit out of the hat. We'll see what uh, that looks like. Yeah, just moving on to news quickly. Did you, What do you think about um, Demi Petrados? Like, that is so weird, right? Like, he was going set to join Newcastle Jets yep. at the end of the season. It was part of their, like, triple announcement. Yep. And now he's gone to Korea. Like, yep. it's so, so bizarre. Oh, look, I just think it just shows you the value of a contract in, in world yeah. football. Um, and He's getting like four times his wage. Well, apparently. exactly. That's the thing. When the, can't Asian, fault him. the Asian money comes calling, um, you you got to go. You can't blame them. And that's one of the reasons for look, a, a, abolishing that salary cap or at least bumping it up a little bit more is that, you know, we're losing, like, you're always going to lose your best players. I mean, you know, even countries european countries lose their best players like belgium holland whatever you know those guys still go to spain or italy or or england or whatever so you're always going to lose your top but to lose like your middle tier players for 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 maybe what's like a a couple of hundred grand or something like that weakens the league Um, it does and 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 it punishes success because you saw like Popovich what he was talking about the wanderers you know they win the championship every player wants to bump up in their contract other clubs can't poach them for just like a little bit more and then it weakens that club um, and it just weakens the league. So I don't know what the solution is, whether that's a total abolition of the salary cap or not, but I think something needs to be done there because you're seeing this more and more now. Um, Do you think just the removal of a salary cap would increase transfer fees in Australia? Well, uh, look, Like between clubs I'm talking about? Look, I understand the salary cap promotes competitiveness to an and extent. it allows, yeah, it allows clubs in Australia to negotiate with each other more freely. Correct, and 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 that's good. to an extent that's good, and I understand it. But on the other hand, you've got teams like Melbourne City who are probably being held back by the salary cap. I really and, want to talk about them this week. Yeah, well, and we yeah. will get to them. But you know, Sydney FC, Melbourne Victory. Uh, Melbourne City, probably even like maybe Perth Glory and the Wanderers and now the Jets with Chinese owners. If you abolish the salary cap, I'm not saying they're going to get uh, messy next week, but no. they'll get, you could have a Fauna Roly in each club, at least. You could probably have three or four players on the level of like a Fauna Roly and a Brandan and those kind of guys. Like all five foreigners could be like of that quality at least. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I just think you got to bump up that salary cap. It's, you want, I mean, yeah, you want a level playing field, but at the same time, you want clubs like Sydney FC and Melbourne Victory and Melbourne City to be dominating Asia 
and yeah, mixing definitely. it with the big boys, and it's holding them back from going to that next level. Um, what what percentage do you think a Sydney FC, a Melbourne City are ahead of, say, like the lowest team in the A League? Say, like a I don't know who it would be. Would it be Wellington? Oh, uh, in terms of spending or in terms of performance, the, the spending power. Yeah, I think the spending power Mariners have generally been the lowest. Um, what, what percent do you think Sydney FC or Melbourne City are ahead of them? Like, if the salary cap disappeared. Like, what sort of gap are we talking about, do you think? Well, you saw already, I think, this season, City are paying like seven million in wages, and Sydney FC are, are at about five. Yeah. Um, whereas I think the Mariners are not even using 100% of the cap, because wow. I don't think you even have to pay 100 but You have to pay like 95% of the cap or something like that. So Mariners are paying maybe like two, 2.2, 2.3 million wages. And so I think it's a massive difference. It's a massive difference. Yeah. And, and City, I think... Uh, if you abolish the cap, then they basically be. I reckon they could go up to maybe fifteen, twenty million wages, um, because they're paying Cahill like I think three. Fornaroli is on about one and a half. That's already four and a half, and plus the rest of the salary cap is another two and a half. So that's yeah, that's that's like your your, your seven mil, um, yeah. and then like your bonus payments, whatever else stuff. So you're looking at seven, seven and a half mil. Um, I think you abolish the cap, Sydney FC and, and Melbourne City would probably go up to maybe 10, 12, 15 mil. Um, look, Sydney aren't it, stupid. Then it's a case of like the owners, how rich they are. And then like commercially, like obviously a Melbourne and a Sydney team have an advantage yeah. over like a Central or a Tasmanian team. Yeah. Well, so. and, and look, the thing is, uh, especially for a team like City, they're not stupid. They're not just going to throw money away generally. No. I think they did at the start at, in Manchester City. They maybe threw money away, but they quickly learned their lesson. And they're not, they're not um, just throwing money away willy nilly anymore. And they won't here either, but they'll spend more. And like you said, if you become a big club in Asia, then there's even more potential because then you obviously, you, you know, you get a big marquee. You see what happened like when um, Gal- LA Galaxy had Beckham, all of a sudden you want to tour Asia. That's how yeah. clubs make a lot of money, right? Arsenal coming to Sydney now, that's going to make them money. So if City start having a couple of marquees in Melbourne City that are maybe worthy of that kind of big international level, then maybe, you know, they're going to start touring China and Japan and playing friendlies and competing in, in cups and things like that and there's money on the side and of course there's advertising in Asia and things like that and that's where I know Sydney FC always talk about they want to be the biggest team in Asia because they know there's a big um, Chinese and Asian population in Sydney there's a lot of football fans here there's commercial opportunities there so they want to grow their business and their football club in that direction Um, and like you said that probably you know is a is a roadblock for teams like Tasmania um but you know that's just part part of the, the part of football. Football, yeah. yeah. Um, let's actually go on to the game Sydney FC Brisbane Raw. I thought Brisbane. I predicted they'd win. I think they should have won. Um, yeah, I thought I mean, Vukovic was the man of the match, but um, Michael Theo was equally as good. Um, Keith yeah. both stood out. Um, I'm finding like this is to extend a bit to like City, um, even Perth Glory. Like the key strikers in the league, they've gone quiet. Yeah. And, like, I think now is where depth and, like, the player, like, creatively the depth there is, like, showing who's, like, the top teams because you look at Keo, you look at um, Berisha, he's gone quiet, you look at Bobo, like, they're all, they all, like, completely slowed, like, died off in terms of goal threat. I agree. It has dried up. I mean, look, Brisbane, Sydney, that was, that was a cracker game. I think I called maybe a draw just it because draw, I thought yeah. Sydney wouldn't lose. But for, for a nil all draw, that was like, um, just one of the best nil all draws you will ever see. Like it was uh, full on attacking from both sides. And like you said, probably the two best players on the pitch were both the, both of the keepers. Um, especially Vukovic. Um, Impressive, right? Considering his like personal situation. Yeah. Yeah. Look, and that's, um, that's testament to him, and he's always been. He's always been a great character and a great um, person, I think, and a, and a and a top keeper as well. Um, and he's really just taken it to another level now at Sydney. I mean, it helps when you've just got a rock solid backline <laughs> and 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 just a rock solid 
team all round that's just so hard to to get past. Um, but full credit to Brisbane, I thought they put in a good good effort, more than a good effort, really. It was it was a ripper game. Um, no team deserved to lose, but again, that just shows you where Sydney are at at the moment. You just can't beat them. They they won't lose. They might not win. They you know, but they're just so hard to break down and get past, and they refuse to concede, and that's what makes them you know championship material. Yeah, I don't have the statistic on me, but I can't imagine they've been behind in games too often. I think I saw one of them, and this might have actually been in the Australia Day game against Victory, there was a, one of the commentators did actually mention the statistic that in all they've been behind for something like an hour. All up. That's incredible. For, yeah, for the whole season, they've yeah. been down for maybe like yeah, forty five minutes or an hour, all up. Um, they're they're just yeah, they're, they're the kind of thing that a championship side is built on. You know, just rock solid defense, impossible to get past. Um, and and then every now and then they just had this flurry where they do put three or four past the team and just sort of you know bang 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 and all it always seems to nil. be like a different player too like you saw Carney Ebini is doing it now like it's yeah. just their depth is like continuously getting them out of holes like even when they're not playing their best you got Vukovic standing up you've got Ebini scoring goals in the last three or four weeks like it just doesn't like I was we were talking this is probably two months ago how Victory and City were probably the better finals teams but yep. I think with Sydney's depth I don't know I, I just I think Sydney might might be just too strong even in the finals. Yeah, and 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 like you said, the the depth is is key. Um, and I think that was one of the big things for um, Graham Arnold is he wanted like two top players in every position, and he got it. And yeah. you look at the bench, and if you got guys like their bench is so attacking, they got a Beanie, Simon, um, Dimitrievich, probably yeah, maybe sometimes Carney as well. Um, that is a massive attacking bench. Um, Ebini's coming back into some of his best form. Look, they just had d- defensive issues. They picked up this Geordie boys from, from Holland. He just came straight in. Straight in and yeah. just looks rock solid, like straight yeah, away. Yeah, it's slotted impressive. right in. He's only 28 years old. Um, yeah, so he's got I, an op- it, he could be at Sydney FC for like three or four years here. He, he looks really good. The only problem they could have is with salary, right? Again, like, again, yeah, yeah that, that might be the only thing because he's just slotted straight in um and like you said their attack is just i mean holosco has been generally pretty good all season bobo up and down but still not too bad um ninkovic is the key and broska's the broska's been the other standout i think broska is the person that has stood up for bobo like yeah. in his absence, like I think he's been one of their most important players yeah. in the time that they needed him. Yeah, and and at thirty five years of age, that's just like a second win for him. He's yeah. he's having a ripper season. So especially in summer, like credit yeah. to his like yeah yeah full fitness. credit to him. And and like you said, the thing about yeah maybe City or Victory are better finals teams, but I think Sydney have shown a resilience now that is going to prove hard to beat even in a final scenario. But time will tell. Let's um just skip Wellington Wanderers for a second. Let's go straight to the Melbourne Derby because yeah. there were so many talking points on this match. The thing that I want to start with is Tim Cahill. Yeah. Now, I didn't see... This was similar to the FFA. I didn't see anyone criticize the red card decision. Now, to me, it was absurd that he got a red card. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you've seen um Mark Bosnich mention what he said. Yeah. Yeah, um, that this is what an effing, effing disgrace. Yeah, like how he says, have a look at the big screen. You're an effing disgrace. How is that a red card? Well, and look, and you know what the interesting thing is? I've just seen now there's a report on Fox Sports that the referees actually, or the match review panel or whoever it was, actually contacted City um, to say that it should have actually been a yellow yeah, but, definitely. but for some reason, I don't know why, but they can't um, rescind it. it or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's puzzling. Um, like you said, it probably should have just been a yellow and, you know, shut up and, and get on with it. To his credit, you know, okay, he was come out and actually apologized and said, look, you know, at the end of the day, I shouldn't have even, I shouldn't have done that. Um, it was well, he was in the wrong, for. but um, like emotional, like in, got a, the, the emotions got the best of him. But like to give a red card in a match yeah. like this for something that's not not dangerous he didn't push the ref no. like it 
just like toughen up Too a much. little bit, like let the game play. Too much. I mean, look, this is the final paragraph on this Fox Sports news story. It basically says, it's believed that FFA contacted City on Sunday to reveal that Cahill should only have been issued with a yellow card by referee Chris Beef. However, there is no avenue to overturn the decision. Now, I don't get why there is no avenue, apart from we don't want to make the referees look stupid. Yeah. Um, but it, it should probably be overturned, but... What what a crazy crazy game that was! Just like it had said, everything, didn't it? Had like everything. The injuries, the yellow cards. I think there was like eleven or twelve, well, which is has huge ramifications for the game. We'll talk about later against yeah. Brisbane. Um, Bazanis. Yeah, Bazanis versus. I think Berisha. he's gone for five six matches. I reckon. I reckon, and and it, I think it's telling that um, Melbourne City actually came out and Apologized. preempted it with yeah. an apology and said we're going to send him to counselling and stuff. Um, I'm not sure why, but there's a bit of history there. I think from the first, maybe even from the first derby or maybe the second one. Um, that I think Barisha might have gone up against Buzanis in a penalty before, or there's there's been I remember I think in one of the previous derbies there was a bit of um, uh, fireiness from between those two, um, getting in each other's face and and stuff like that. So there was a bit of history there. There's um, a bit of history with Buzanis. Full stop. He is yeah, a bit of a fiery, like, <laughs> fiery he seems, character. He seems like a bit of a nutter. I mean, look, he is. Yeah. To to be fair. When that goal went in, Barisha threw the ball at him and, and like <laughs> celebrated in his face. Yeah. Um, but then to, you know, to go and sort of slur someone like that is unnecessary. I think you're right. It could probably be five weeks or so. Um, I think it could be, yeah. And like, like I said, I mean, the fact that City preempted it and, and demanded that actually they apologize. Then they said Buzanis is actually going to personally apologize as well. Plus he's going to go to canceling. They're trying to um, limit the damage because, yeah. and this is the other thing. Don't forget City. This is the, the City group you're dealing with now when you're a keeper for Melbourne City. They don't tolerate that kind of crap. No, Do you know I mean, they, they don't. don't want those kind of characters in the in their family. Do so you think, that's um, that's be, that's bad for Buzanis, really. Do you think Saracen is the keeper of full stop now? Well, no matter when he comes back, he I think he'll be back this weekend. That's for sure, and he'll probably be back for a few more weeks. I was surprised that he got um, dropped, dropped to begin with because yeah. I thought he was he was pretty good. Um, but obviously, I think they favoured Buzanis maybe for being able to play out from the back or whatever it was, but. I think um, this, long-term, this is, right, yeah, he's got more to it. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I think, you know, this is Sorensen's opportunity to at least go all the way through to the end of the season now. And, and Buzanis might have really shot himself in the foot there. Do you want to talk about City um, now or do it in the preview for Brisbane? Because I want to talk about all the yellow cards and everything. I think maybe keep that for the preview. Well, let's talk about it now because that's another talking point from that match. So you've got now... Five players suspended for the next game. Fauna Roli, yep. Luke Bratton, Malik, Fernando Brandan, and Manny Musket. Yeah, and then um, you've got, obviously, the Tim Cahill, and you've and got And Tim Yakinson. Cahill, Jakobsen's injured, injured and, and looks like Bruzanis is going to miss as well. Wow. That, it's literally wow. seven of their first team. Yeah, and look, and I think that was another report that I saw there where um, I think it was sort of hinted that City were kind of disappointed in the way that their players acted and carried on in that game yeah. with some of the tackling and thing because basically it just looked like they let the frustrations get the better of them and once again, they just didn't play football. Well, to be honest, I mean, they, they've they had this sort of behavior quite a few times this season. They just haven't had a ref that's dealt with it in a, yeah. an adequate sense. Yeah. And, like, and for all yeah. I say about the red card, which I thought was terrible, I thought like in terms of the general play, he was very good. Yeah, I think he was, and and you can't fault any of those cards. And no. like you said, to to have that many players on a yellow, and they all uh, facing suspension, and they all picked up a yellow, like that is just poor form. Fauna Roli's the captain. Fauna Roli's a striker. Like strikers shouldn't be picking up that many yellows. No. Um, same as, you know, Bratton, you know, he doesn't really do much defending. Um, I, I can't see it. The only ones I would have understood would have been maybe Malik and Manny Musket picking up bookings and being and suspended. And Brandon, because he's his attitude. And Brand, yeah, that's right. But 
something's happened to City. They've they've lost it, and I think it's crisis time almost now. Like it's just falling apart for them. Um, you know, we've talked about it week in week out, but they've gone from just being a red hot Premiership favourites to having their their the rugs um, pulled out they're from under top them. Top four under threat. Top four like under threat from Perth Glory now. Threat, yeah. yeah, and not only that, but they're playing badly. They've just they lost are. the plot. Yeah. Like we keep saying, Fornaroli not seeing anything from him anymore. Bratton hardly sided. Fernando Brandan uh, hardly gets the ball. Kurt Colazzo not doing anything. Um, Kamau not seeing much from him. Cahill's been pretty much their, their leading light. I mean, Cahill's scored most of their goals recently. Um, the last month, yeah, especially. I, yeah. I don't know what's happened to the city at the moment. Something's, I don't know if it's tactics. Or, or what it is, but they have just completely lost it. And like I said, City Group don't tolerate this kind of stuff. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen because if they, even if they finish fourth, it's a disappointing season. If they don't make the four, surely like heads are going to roll. Like City are going to come in and Valcanus gone. Um, and I think of them, there's going to be a cull. There's going to be a culling of players. Like they've assembled a star-studded squad here, and they are not performing, not even close. Um, I don't, I don't know what's happened. I can't put my finger on it, except that just everybody's playing badly. Um, and, the problem and is for trouble. City is like, even if they do get top four, like their form going into it is so troubling. Yeah, like, I don't know what's happened to Fauna Roli. Their ill discipline is a bigger sign of their preparation going into a match for me. Yep. Like I think, like in terms of formation tactics, I don't yep. see what's there. The um, I, f- I always said that getting uh, an internal um solution for their manager was the wrong decision. I think yep. you need to go in. Maybe it's difficult mid season to get someone that you want long term. Yeah. Um, maybe they just write this season off, like to the, <sighs> in terms of like not in terms of not making finals, but like get into finals and then hope you show up on the day. Yeah, maybe. I, yeah. I still think. There's questions to be asked tactically, and I don't think he's doing enough. No. Um, the problem for me is, like, like, this is the same with Melbourne Victory in a sense. Like, they've got, like, this nine-week period where they just need to not slip up. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's a payoff. Like, even if they win six of the nine games, seven of the nine games, like, they're not going anywhere. No. no. They're, they're going to stay where they are, and I think that's the big concern. Because you look at Perth Glory, you look at Wanderers, Newcastle Jets, even the Mariners. Like they've got an ambition, they've got an aim to point yeah. at, which are, which is above where they are. And I think the motivation there is far more dangerous and very dangerous for like Brisbane Raw and Melbourne City. Yeah, agreed. And and like you said, it just seems to be a lack of enthusiasm and motivation at the moment. Um, they're they're floating, but they're floating down. Um, they they they're going down, and that second half, look, they they City opened the scoring, but that was a lucky goal. And after that, victory just tore them apart, like wave after wave of attack. And Rojas was just running rings around them for that Barisha goal, like he was just dancing in the box. They couldn't get near him. It was just embarrassing for City. Like Rojas was just on fire. Victory were just uh, ruthless. Um, City just had no answer. And and like you said, that going forward, they seem, seem to not have anything. They miss Jakobsen big time. They need him at the back. He's Any idea how he, bad the injured is? I'm not sure what the... I think it's a hamstring so, or, or something like weeks. that. So it could be a few weeks, but they need him badly. Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're in big trouble. I just, like you said, I'm not seeing anything... And I don't know if Val Canis has brought much to the table. Um, like you said, internal might be all right, but to, to keep going. But look, to be fair, I think they were going down even with Van Ship. So yeah, they were. They, yeah. But the problem is, like, if you look at statistics, their form, like, they're not winning away from home. No, like six, the last six away games, lost three, drawn three. <laughs> so I mean, it's yeah. similar to Perth Glory when we talk about them. Like, if you don't win your away games then like you've got very little chance to go up the ladder. And I think because Melbourne City had such a good start, like I think it's overshadowing what they are actually are right now. I think in three or four weeks, we're going to see really where Melbourne City are as a club. And I think some people are going to be surprised. Yeah, I think so. And and like you said, for City to, to ride off this season, I don't, I think there's going to be, there's going to be punishment for a lot yeah. of people involved from when, when the City group review it and the go. The problem is like, who are they punishing? Because, like, I think the players are in this, like, scenario where they're almost immune from the punishment because they can point to this, like, intern manager. They look at Van yeah. Ship leaving. And I think 
their motivation as a club, I don't think they have any personally. I, I think there should be motivation there just purely being in the finals, but yep. I think they've realized top four is all we're going to do. And I think as soon as they think that they're in danger of not getting it. I think so. And yeah, maybe, like you said, maybe they think they're good enough to just like storm into the finals and, and smash everyone um, in, in sort of knockout games. But I think that the, um, not the punishment, I guess, but the overhaul will be in the footballing department. I think yeah, City exactly. will go. That's why I think the players aren't playing well th- because yeah. there's no threat from their point of nah. view. It's all like the board and like well, the train and the look, coaches some, and the setup. Some heads might roll because, like I said, I think when you play for the City group, there's certain things you need to adhere to in terms of like who you are as a person and a role model yeah. and things I think like Brandan that. Might be in trouble. Brandan <laughs> might be in trouble and guys yeah. like Buzanis and stuff like that. But I think the, I think City are going to bring in their own people going forward. Um, I think they're, they're probably going to if they're smart they'll bring in a technical director they're going to bring in a coach from the city group i don't know like Vieira or someone like that or someone from another club um someone that maybe they're looking to groom as well and and probably their own assistant and maybe even who knows they're going to have to maybe bring in some other city people to basically be permanently stationed in in melbourne and keep an eye on things because it seems like um the Melbourne Melbourne aren't following the city guide in a lot of things and like they're they're the rogue club at the moment and, and things aren't going well for them. So uh, it's it's here's, it's fascinating. Here's my outside bet. I think in a year or two you're gonna see Mikel Arteta <laughs> manage Melbourne City for wow. a year or two and then he'll take over from Pep. That's wow. my my opinion. That's huge. I yeah. mean look, it could be and that's I think that's what they want to do is they wanna have City as kind of that that ground where you know you come and prove yourself in, in well, the A League with City and yeah, you talk about the salary cap. Like I think if that got abolished, you'd see a lot of connection between England and Melbourne City. Yeah, you would, and 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 that would be natural, I think. But in the meantime, uh, you know, and while that's not the case, City need to to do better. I think it's it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out for the rest of the season. But I'm not seeing where the improvement's going to come from at this stage. There's a few teams like City that are just sort of floating at the moment, and there's like only nine games left, right? So. Yep. I mean, every loss is, is really critical at this point in the season. Yep. I mean, we saw that with Wellington um, lost again. That's three losses in a row now. I mean, you look back December, they beat Melbourne victory and you're looking at a team that won two back to back. We're in the top six, really thought they were pushing for like, even to go like fourth or fifth, like if results went their way. But I mean, since the Melbourne victory game, they've lost to Brisbane Raw at home one nil, which isn't the worst result, I guess. They mm. drew two all to Adelaide, which really killed them. Yep. And now they've lost to uh, Western Sydney at home, 3-1. I think that is a big loss That's because the Wanderers haven't result. traveled well. Yeah. Um, but credit to the Wanderers, they were very good. Yeah. And um, Shane Smeltz got red card. I think he's been an absolute <laughs> train wreck. Yeah. Since well, he yeah. Came back. Yeah. I mean, what? Yeah. What do you expect? The, like a last minute kind of replacement like that from a guy that's hardly played. But why is it these clubs like Wellington and Wanderers? refuse to bring in a proper striker is it just they can't they go to the well don't they because well yeah. and, and again it comes down to this that the talent pool's not there so that's one thing um and, and you think that's a seller cap or is that just not appealing enough that's i think it's a bit of both i think there's part of it is salary cap part of it is you've got players that are probably good enough in the state league that the clubs don't want to take a, a risk on for whatever reason yeah. um and that could be ignorance and that goes back to that we don't have a second division and we don't have a league where these kind of players can prove themselves um, and that comes you into it a bit. a bit too big well it might be but it might not be but these yeah. clubs don't want to take a take a chance really um, that's only the, the Mariners are really doing that at the moment yeah and 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 look and that's a part of it and, and I guess you go back to what you know but uh, for, for me Wellington uh, super disappointing and once again their defense is just like Swiss cheese like yeah. this pathetic like uh, the Wanderers, yeah, full credit to them. They've bounced back. Um, you know, it remains to be seen whether they're going to back it up and, and do it again. But that was a good result. They did everything they could there. But Phoenix, just pathetic. And, you know, they, they, Phoenix were put on notice at the start of this season by the FFA. FFA was saying they're not hitting the metrics. They're not bringing in the crowds. They're not playing good football. They're not bringing in marquee players. They're not doing anything. And they're not offering the league enough. Um, and they just haven't done anything this season. I think Merrick did the best he could. He brought in the right kind of players. They had an attacking lineup. Um, and I think it didn't they go did, well. I think they've done better with him 
than without him because yeah. I feel like if you look at the fixtures, you look at the situation, what happened, um, there was a lot of decisions going against Wellington at the start of the season and the fixture at least wasn't kind and I thought he wasn't given enough time now. Now, fair enough, he, I think, intentionally stepped away. Yeah. But um, I don't think they've improved. They've had a couple of weeks after he left of just like the natural yeah. uptick in form and momentum because of the new you know manager, new um, environment, atmosphere. Yeah. But since then, I think they've gone backwards which is surprising because i didn't know they could yeah <laughs> well and that's yeah they and they have and like you said that the, if you look at it it's probably like even worse than under merrick um i feel like it yeah and i, I think a lot of it's down to the players really like a barbarousas hasn't done anything guy finkler hasn't done anything and again this this once again a it goes back to the salary cap that you're just seeing the same players get recycled like barbarousas and finkler go to wellington there's no new blood coming in and second of all, it's probably a lack of ambition and creativity from Wellington that they, instead of trying to actually recruit someone, they just go, oh, we'll take these two guys from your, from your team because they were pretty good last season. Um, they should be dropping the mother load to get Marco Rojas. Yeah, well, they, they, yeah, I don't, I can't see him going back there. No, I mean, no way. The, yeah. the Phoenix are just the shambles at the moment and they, they need a big overhaul. Um, but I guess while there's that axe hanging over their head that they might not be in the league for too much longer, um, they're not going to, you know, shell out millions at the same token. So it's just a, it's a strange case at the moment. But they're really not offering anything for for my money. Where, where do you position the Wanderers? Like, if you had to compare them to Perth Glory and Newcastle Jets, right? Because they're they're in sixth place, but I mean, they've only won the four games. Yeah. So it's hard to judge them when, like, you look at a team that's won four out of eighteen games, and you try to like compare that sort of form into like a finals team. Yeah. Like they are sixth. The only I don't expect them to finish above Newcastle because you see the form of like Andrew Nabu, um, Nordstrand, and players like that. Hall especially. Yeah. Um, and they Newcastle have like individual quality that I don't see at the Wanderers. No. Nah. And and not only that, but I think Glory, apart from that blip against the Mariners. Is. They're, they're back again. Um, that was that was just a blip on the radar. I think they are making oh, a run. Talk about that. I well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. But I think I think Glory and like I said, the Jets and look, even the Mariners. All of a sudden, like back to back wins. Good on them. Like they they're showing um, some energy and some urgency. I think with youth, which yeah, is fantastic. with youth yeah. and and pace and and attack. And for me, really, the, the worst two teams in the league are Phoenix and Adelaide. Yep. Um, Wanderers, like you said, they've, they haven't lost too many. They've, they've copped a lot of draws, but. It's hard because, right? Because a run of two or three wins and they're, they're in it. But they're like, in it, you yeah. just, it's hard to judge them right now because yeah. you see Santelab pop up with a couple goals here and there. But aside from him, Nico Martinez, they don't really have anyone that's like stood up in a game and won any points for them. Like, that's outside right. of Martinez, um, and they, yeah, and they just don't have that kind of game breaker, someone to just be really exciting and take the game by the scruff of the neck. And for mine, I'd, I'd prefer to see Newcastle make the finals than the Wanderers just because yeah, they are too. exciting. Yeah. Um, so I think they upset more teams above yeah. them than, yeah. Yeah. Would. Uh, hard to, hard to judge the Wanderers, like you said, and like a couple of wins and, and they're right back in it. But for me, they, it's been a disappointing campaign for them. Um, speaking of the teams in the race, we had the big six pointer, I guess, Glory, Newcastle, yeah. um, Glory, Castro, especially very impressive. Um, yeah. but what about Keo? Like if you look at his statistics, um, he's scored only the eight goals now in 18 appearances. That's yeah. not the Keo that I remember from last year or the season before. You look at Taggart, 13 yeah. appearances, eight goals. He's like a revelation for Perth yeah. Glory since he came back from the injury. Um, do you think what what's with Kier? Is it because he's just like not gelling well enough with Taggart? Is it because you know it's just that sort of like you know where a player sort of goes stale in the league? You see it with um Bobo, like he's had a difficult second half. Like, is that a concern for Perth Glory? Like they were very impressive against um Newcastle, but I mean once again can see twice they've got yeah. the worst goal record in the league i think um in comparison with the mariners 35 goals is yeah. against <laughs> like where do you put perth glory because like yes the result is impressive but they seem to be a moment away from self-destruction every time you see them oh yeah they're just they're, they're just like a, a schizophrenic side they're just like uh they're, they're crazy. The bipolar they're, girlfriend they're, that like hugs you one minute, then stabs you with a knife. They're just the madman walking down the street that you know <laughs> you you don't want to look at because you don't want to make eye contact with because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah. they're they're just mental. Um, but 
Reese Reese Williams made an yeah. appearance. How about that? We hey, were not we, predicting that. Round of, round of applause for Reese Williams. He laced up the boots and and got on the pitch. I guess he's Took trying off to his get, Twitter feed. Well, yeah, I think he's just trying to work up some fitness for next season. I guess just did, sort of did hit, you actually hit see like his appearance. He looks like he's been sleeping for the last month yeah. or two. <laughs> he's just been in a coma, like just it? out of bed, like rolled yeah. out, put he's on. He's just his been kit. tweeting from his bed <laughs> for the last. <laughs> With that, his sweatpants on, like he did not look like he's been out like too much lately. Yeah, well. Uh, Look, I mean, to, to be fair to him, he, he actually had a decent performance. Um, yeah, he probably he's, came he's on a bit bad. earlier than he would have wanted, um, but he, he did all right. So I don't know what that means, really, for, for the glory or for for him, but I'm guessing if they can keep him fit and he plays through to the finals, then that could be a big bonus for them. Um, so yeah, We that, talked about like what would happen, a player of his quality coming in um, into a team, like what influence his um, absence has had on Perth Glory. Yeah. And I think you said in your um, takeaways, he's like a new signing, as cliche as that is. And yeah. um, I mean, he could be a massive boost for Perth Glory in these last nine games. Oh, I think so. And, and, and to get back to your point there about Keo, I think maybe he is just being squeezed out a little bit by Taggart. Yeah. Um, because, you know, Keo was always that focal point, especially for Castro to, to feed him into the box and, and score those tap-ins and things like that. So I, I, I don't know if he's playing terribly. Uh, maybe he's just being squeezed out a little bit by the formation, but I don't think that'll bother him so much. Um, the, the thing for Glory is they don't get many penalties. No. So he's not getting a chance to boost his tally. I mean, Barisha's probably had a, taken about five penalties this season already. Well, I mean, um, Castro won that penalty and took it himself, which oh, yeah, well, I thought was surprising. Yeah, Castro. Look, I, I love Castro. I, honestly, I, I'll, I'll, I know Glory love to feed into that West versus the rest mentality yeah. and that siege mentality, and I'll... I'll Pay, I'll pay them credit for that because if Castro was for Sydney FC, you wouldn't hear the end of it. The guy's like 38 years old. Yeah. The guy, and he's just, he's just unbelievable. He's amazing. He's having a ripper season. Like when we started here, like the commentators say that, um, people always say that Diego Castro is the best player in the league if yeah. he, you know, stayed fit, but like you don't see that like in the media. No. Nah. Like he's just so quiet. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, he started off slowly this season again, and I he thought, did, yeah. oh, here we go, this could be the end, you know, it's, it's age catching up with him, but man, he's back to some of his best, he's just so good, and he's the difference, and he was the difference between the Jets and the Glory, Jets were gr- good, I thought, good value, they put up a great fight, and like I said, Glory still just cop goals left, right, and center, they can't do anything to keep them out, but... Those fantastic goals from Newcastle, to be fair, right? Yeah. Like the um, Hull pass Hull. and the um, the Hoffman goal were fantastic. Yeah. I don't think the loss to Newcastle is going to hurt them too much. No, I don't think so. I think, and that's why I don't think they lost for the glory to the Mariners seem to have hurt them too much because they bounced right back from that as well. And I think they'll keep going. I think that was a blip on the radar. Um, they've got their, their goal scoring boots on at the moment. Uh, and look, two ga- two points away from, from City now. Um, I think Glory can can take the top four here. Yeah, just the, their attacking intent is a lot better than than City's. Um, it's a lot better than Brisbane Roars probably as well. Okay, they've got some defensive issues, but they they Maybe just Bruce Williams in a couple of weeks he solves that. Yeah, and look, Gr- yeah, Griffiths will be back as well, so they'll get a bit of stability there. Um, and I just think they're a real chance here now. They they're starting to find form. Like I said, Castro, he's just a maestro at the moment, and he's red hot. Um, What's disappointing, I think, for him personally, I, th- I think he's going to miss out on Team of the Year. Maybe, I because guess. Because how dominant Sydney have been. Well, maybe because you've got, I guess, in that position, if you want to say that Ninkovic is there and maybe Rojas as well. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact that he plays for Perth Glory might, <laughs> might go against him there as well that he's maybe not noticed. Um, but he is just a machine at the moment. Uh, yeah, I love, player. I love him. I, I, I don't know if he can go around one more season, but I'd like to see it. But the the problem is just the the length of the off season here and and that. So I don't know, but he's just so good at the moment. So I, I think Glory can make a late charge here. I, I'm giving them every every chance to do so. Their next game is against Adelaide. So I've got a counterpoint to that, but we'll wait till we get to the, yeah. the previews. <laughs> All and, right, um, I'll, I'll, I'll crush your dreams of 
Perth getting in the top six. All but, right. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens, I guess. Um, and as for Diego Carrasco, we just need to appreciate him while he's here because, yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't think he'll be here next season, but, I mean, let's hope he is for the league and the neutral sake. Well, well it's, just, it's just after how hard Kenny Lowe can grovel. Because <laughs> he had he had to fly out to Spain last time to beg him, so he might have to pack a weekend bag this time. Yeah, look, he's just gonna have to make him a cake and and fly out <laughs> there and and wine and dine him for for a weekend and just beg him to come back one more time. I wonder It'll if they have some extra funds because um, they might get rid of Keo. You never know. Well, possibly that could yeah. be. Yeah, be interesting what happens. Um, let's go on to the final game. As you said, Mariners playing the youth. Scoring great goals in recent weeks. Um, Adelaide find new depths in the drop <laughs> too. Um, their keeper, uh, Eugene, uh, was a Galkovich, yeah. is injured. It looks long term. Yeah. They've got the Champions League coming. <laughs> like, how much further can Adelaide fall? Because I feel like if they don't get another point for the rest of the season, I wouldn't be surprised. It's it's just becoming really sad now. Um, it is right because it's just like the worst. Um, title defense like in terms of the season after it would have to be unless unless Leicester get relegated in the EPL which is also looking very likely (laughs) now but this is I mean this is just sad and pathetic and nobody in the A-League's been this bad after winning the league uh, I don't think so no and I mean it's just it's not even that it's just the performances are just flat and insipid now and full credit to the Mariners they were red hot like they again just attack after attack and just wave after wave of counterattacks and those those balls that they were feeding through were just sublime and um, they were just piercing Adelaide um and I, I've got a lot of respect for the Mariners I think you know it would have been easy for them to sort of fall apart towards the second half of the season but they have kept going that's back to back wins for them now Royal O'Donov- O'Donovan will be back soon um, they're, they're looking good the Mariners I, I don't think they're going to make the six but it's not out of the question um, uh, and they could do a little bit more damage to, for the rest of the season yeah I think that um, in the game itself like uh, there was this period I think it was like the first 20 minutes 25 minutes O'Donovan got put through um, the one of the most clearest one-on-one chances you'll see and he got pulled up for offside yeah. and he literally was two yards in like yeah, it was right. just like one of these ref decisions where I'm like I hope Eden's watching this game <laughs> because this is like the prime example you show people when you talk about refereeing in the A-League it was like what are you watching but did Roy O'Donovan headbutt anybody no so <laughs> no, it, it all it all worked out well in the end right no, yeah, exactly. no he's learned his lesson there but and like you said it probably could have been more and Adelaide United just wow I, I don't know anymore I just it's it's sad to see like a Moore is, is a legend and he's come here and it, it, it was on the back of Gombau's good work the season before. It was Gombau's side. He built it up. He left. And Moore took over. They won the championship. They won the double, really. And then now when he's had a chance to shape his side, it's just gone so, so very wrong. Like, bad recruiting. Just pathetic recruitment. Are they... Are they re- a free win for any team that plays him because well, let's talk about the Perth Glory. They play them. Um, the thing why I think Adelaide are terrible and why I think they probably will draw with Perth Glory. <laughs> uh, Glory, sorry, is this is Perth Glory's away form right this season? Yeah, they've only won once on the road, and that was against Melbourne City. Yeah. Um. Actually, Melbourne, uh, the, the Melbourne teams, Victory and City, the the two best teams they've performed against on the road. Um, yeah. They've picked up points every time they've gone to Melbourne. Um, but their overall record is one win, four draws, four losses on the road. Yeah, that's that bad. to me is terrible. That's now bad. you also got to like keep in mind that's also when they've like lost at home to um Mariners. Yep, twice. Yeah, no, draw one, sorry, and lost once. Yep. Um, so I mean, like you look at this fixture, look at Perth Glory beating Newcastle Jets, and you say, well, Perth are going to kill them, but like. This season has shown that Perth Glory don't travel well. Mm-hmm. So, like, do you, do you still give Perth Glory the three points, like, in your prediction? Because, oh, like, yeah. no, they're like, neurotic, yeah. right? I'd, I'd like to think that they could, but like you said, this is, it, it, you know, this is Perth Glory going to chance to just stuff it all up like they always do um but i'd like to think that they can actually go there and, and beat adelaide um i just You'd like think, to think so i just think adelaide aren't showing any fight anymore and if you're gonna like do something you've just got to go in there score early against them and, and and it's all over so hard to call like you said because just because perth glory are so um wildly different week in week out but yeah 
I like to think that there's actually some there's some form building now, and I think they they could get they they should get over the top of Adelaide, and they probably will. Yeah, I'm going to go a draw. <laughs> I think it'll be. <laughs> I think it'll be one. Come all. on, man! <laughs> I can't do it. No, I can't do it. No, you can't. No. <laughs> Unless, like, I want to see Kerry score, and I want to see, like, if Reese Williams starts again, he doesn't get on Twitter midweek. I want to see if his, like, second full <laughs> 90 minutes has an influence on the Perth Glory defense, because I think that needs to improve. But, um, yeah, Adelaide look hopeless. And I think, is it the um, Asian Cup um, Champions League starts this week, right? Yeah, well, uh, I'm not sure if it starts this week. I know uh, Brisbane Raw are playing tomorrow night. I think is that the got, second leg, the they, qualifier? Well, that's, they've got another qualifier. This time, I think it's against the Chinese side. I think... Um, uh, uh, Carlos Tevez's uh, oh, okay. Chinese side, so that's, that's going to get in, is it? That'll be interesting. correct. That's that's now the second qualifier there. Um, that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> well, and and I think that's uh, the the A League only gets the two um, the two automatic spots, and then the third one's a qualifier. So yeah, fair enough. Yeah. That, that's going to be interesting um, because yeah, this this Chinese side has got. Um, uh, what is it? Gus Poet as the manager. They got Tevez. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Who are they playing? The Shanghai Shenhua they're playing. So uh, that's going to be, be a fun game to watch. I, I, yeah, I think so. Hope, I mean, look, I'll give Roar a chance because they're not terrible. And just because you got Tevez in the side doesn't instantly mean 10 nil. Um, no, nah, Brisbane are good on the ball. Yeah, they might do all right. They, they could do all right. And, and it's a knockout. It's another do or die game. So I think it's actually going to be a really good game. Um as for Adelaide, when the Champions League hits them, uh, I think they're going to be um, just struggling to, to keep their head above water against all these quality Asian sides, really. Um, they haven't recruited anybody, so it could get ugly for them. But They're on 11 points this yeah. season. Um, yes or no, do you think they go above 15 by the time the season ends? Uh, how many games left? Nine. Uh, nine. Nine, and they got to get another four points. Yeah, four points. <sighs> no. Nah. No nope, way! I don't no think way. so. Uh, to get yeah. another win and a draw, nah. nah. I think they'll get like two draws. <laughs> they might get the a couple. They might pick up a couple more draws, and that'll be the end of it. So yeah, wooden spoon for the United. We've called it. <laughs> yeah, let's call it. Um, what about Brisbane? You talked about them. They play Melbourne City that are missing like literally half their team. Yeah. Um, it is in Melbourne. Brisbane have travelled okay recently. Not as good as their home form, obviously, but they did win against Wellington, and I think they beat the Mariners um, mid-December, but they've lost against a victory. That was at 3-2, and they lost against Sydney FC 2-0. Yep. That was a game we said, like, the levels, they're just different. But yeah. um, Melbourne City aren't on Sydney's level, obviously, and um, missing so many players, I think Brisbane will win pretty comfortably, personally. I think I think this, yeah, this is Brisbane's for the taking. Um it's perfect gonna, opportunity. Yeah, I mean, when they got that many players missing, I don't think City can can do it. Um, it would just be interesting to see if City are going to put up a fight, and yeah. maybe with that many players, they're just going to completely change the game plan and go ultra defensive or, or something like that. You know the bench um, players better than I. Who will they put in striker? I or maybe well, yeah, I was going to say Cahill, but he's he's suspended <laughs> now as well. So who's their third striker? Uh, I don't know. I know they is had, it like Brandan, but he's obviously out. Brandan's out. Um, I know they had um, Corey Gamero, but he's I think a long term injury. Yeah, I don't actually know who they're going to bring in. Um, you could take a, a weekend trip down. Maybe you'd get a game. Oh, I'll lace up for City. Why not? Lace uh, your boots. Yeah, why not? Look, I can't do any worse than what they're doing at the moment. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just come in and do a couple of slide tackles and, and, and should be all right. But I, I think it's just going to be interesting to see if, is there actually going to be a response from City and is there going to be a fight for, from them? I don't think so. They might put like Colazzo up front or something like that. Yeah, or, possibly, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know. They're, they're in all sorts of bother. I think this is Brisbane's for the taking here. And it's, it's a bit of a six-pointer really because... There's a few um, of them this if, week. If, yeah, if, if Raw win um, and they really extend that gap on City, I mean, third versus fourth, it's not a huge advantage, but it does help a little bit. Um, and I think... I think, to be honest, if Brisbane win, they go five points ahead of fourth, which is Melbourne City. Yeah. Um, I think that is third. That is might, third yeah, they might sew it up. So yeah. I, I think it's Brisbane's for the taking and I think they will get the win. Yeah, me too. Um, another six pointer: the Wanderers versus the Mariners. It yep. is in Sydney. Um, huge game for the Wanderers. They have to win at home. 
Mariners, this would be the first time in, I think, like five years they've won three in a row. Yeah. Um, big game for them, big test. They've obviously won the two in a row, but this is like a whole different kettle of fish. Um, what chance do you give them against the Wanderers at home? Wanderers, I um, mean, Santaleb was in great form. Um, I think it'll be a tight game. Yeah. I don't see too many goals going in, but um, I think Wanderers perhaps just win at home. I think so too as well. I think, you know, the Mariners will put in a good shift again. They'll, they'll do well, but they'll just be pipped at the post. Um, three in a row might be asking too much, especially with the Wanderers having um, picked up a little bit of form there against, uh, against the Phoenix. So, uh, like I said, low scoring, Wanderers just... Yeah, just, yep, yeah, I agree. Um, now, this is probably my game of the round, Newcastle Jets, Melbourne victory. Yeah. Um, so, two teams that in current form are probably the best in the league in terms of a goal threat. Um, I This is a hard game to call yeah. because I think similar to Melbourne City, victory don't have too much to play for right now. And I think Newcastle have everything to play for. So, I think while that may not influence the result, I think Newcastle Jets might start better. And I think if they score early on, they could win this game. Yeah. Um, I give Jets every chance in this. Yeah. I think that this is a real banana peel game for uh, victory. I think the Jets, they're so good at the moment. Um, they, they took it to City and they beat them. They really took it to the glory and were unfortunate not to get anything out of that game. Um, and they've got goal scorers. They've got attacking intent. Look, victory always play the same way. They go all out attack and, and they've just, that's their mentality and they always want to win. And, I guess they still think that they can finish top, um, so yeah. they're not going to give up. So I think they'll go for it. Um, but the Jets, I think, are, are equal to the task and at home as well. Um, I think this one might be a draw. Yeah, I think Newcastle are going to win. To well, I, th- yeah. I think they'll win a 2-1. It'll be a um, sort of a free-flowing game like the Victory City game was in the opening like 20 minutes. And um, I think Newcastle are going to take the chances better than victory at the moment. Barisha keeps missing clear yeah. opportunities. Yeah, I don't and, know what's um, happened to him. He's, he's really off the boil. Where, and like you said, the Jets have been quite clinical. Yeah, they it, have. I could see it being a Jets win. Um, I'm going to tip the draw. I don't see victory winning this one at all. Yeah, um, I think that's a fair point. I don't think victory win this. So I'm going to tip a draw, but a win think, for the Jets is just as plausible, I think. Yeah, I think they'll edge it. I think if they stop Rojas, they'll win. So yeah. it'll be a close game. Very interesting that it's at 5.35, your time, uh, Eastern Standard. Yeah. Um, For the final game, Sydney FC, Wellington. Uh, Wellington. This is on the Thursday. Yeah. Um, I think Sydney will win. But I just want to ask this question. Like, do you, Sydney remain undefeated as this season finishes. This is their home fixtures. Wellington, Victory, Mariners, Melbourne City, and the Newcastle Jets. Yeah. Away they play Wanderers, Melbourne City, Perth Glory, and Wellington. Do you think they can navigate that and not lose a game it's because tough. i think that they've got two really tough games for me perth glory and perth yeah and i think newcastle in sydney is going to be difficult yeah i mean that's that that is a tough fixture list but it is, yeah they play city twice victory once glory newcastle yeah it's it's not going to be easy I, I still think they can do it they just they don't show any signs of weakness i think no. against wellington i don't know what's going to happen you, you never know with Sydney. This one could, again, be just a nil all or, or a 1-1 or it could Against just be... Against Wellington. Yeah, I mean, it could be just because Sydney uh, sometimes do go that way yeah. or or it could be like a 5 nil um, for Sydney as well. It depends just how it goes. But either Look that way, in for me, a 5 nil. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so as well. I think it might be like a 4 nil or something. Wellington are just falling apart at the moment and, and Sydney at home on a Thursday night, I think they should do the business quite easily. 4-0. I still think they can go they can go all the way now undefeated. I think they've got the belief they 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 they're red hot at the moment. Everyone's contributing. They they don't have any real injury concerns. Um full depth in the squad. Um like I said the the glory game will be interesting in Perth. That's always yeah, a I tough so. one. Yeah. Um and, and Newcastle as well. But at I this think the stage, Newcastle games are the last game of the season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. the only thing that could do do them in is is nerves or something like that. But at this stage, I just don't see any problems for Sydney. They're just going to keep on going. Yeah, they're they're very strong. Um, I think that'll be it for the A League, unless you've got anything else you want to talk about. No, no, that's that's. Uh, I think we've exhausted everything. Let's have a look at the EPL. 
Yeah, um, we're going to pretend the Arsenal game didn't happen, so let's move on to more interesting topics. Um, <laughs> do we, I don't want to say too much. If you want to say anything... No, no, well, but, look, let's, let's, let's hear it out. I mean, you're the resident Arsenal expert. Have your say. I'm sure a lot of people want to hear what you've got to say about the Gunners. Um, Arsenal were extremely poor. Yep. I think the only like thing I want to bring up, really, um, is the fact that uh, Hector Bellerin got knocked out and there was no foul now the frustrating thing for me is and like this is right like really bizarre is like the media the commentators like all week have been saying um it's not a foul that mm. um marco alonso was brave in his right. tackle against bellerin and for me like the, he went in with his elbow he led with it <laughs> it's assault yeah it's not even a tackle it's actually assault and yep. like the fact that no commentator no referee will actually say that I think there's something going on. I think Why? there's a conspiracy. I okay. think there's aliens or there's some like overseer, like big CEO, shadow boss that's like has this direct order that no one can mention it. And it's just like no one's pretending it happened. But like, what, I, yeah, I, I mean, uh, but do, do you feel it was a, a game changer? No, no. Yeah. I think Arsenal still lose, but um, it just blows my mind that people can't say that's a foul. Like as a neutral person, it, like just talking about a football moment, they can't look at that and say that it's a complete foul well but that is insane. interesting I mean you don't often hear it being called brave to go in for a tackle but with your elbow okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay but look uh, either way like I said I don't think it makes a difference Arsenal no lose. not Again. at all yeah they're shocking um, um, yeah what, what as the sign say? said during the game uh, there needs to be change and you see Gary <laughs> Neville came out and said they were like a bunch of idiots and embarrassing and um and what was the other one also that uh, was it Alex Oxley Chamberlain was it him that <laughs> yeah, he, he liked the uh, Venger out the Venger Facebook out. page or yeah, whatever the Twitter it was post. oh wow so he took even, a leaf even out the of the Reece are, Williams playbook the players are on board yeah well, I think out. that was a mistake but it's quite funny to like just because the thing is like apparently he doesn't follow um the person that tweeted it so he had to go out and look for it yeah right so like what was he looking at oh like, i'm sure his, twitter, accidentally, was, his like, twitter was hacked i'm sure that's how it always <laughs> goes isn't it this is the same it's guys pretty that funny. Beckham. They are <laughs> i think um we've got two teams that are really competing with like the biggest bottlers in england and i think liverpool are pretty close to arsenal to be fair yeah like, well that's two yeah. years a whole like it i think the title's obviously over for Klopp, but like it's curious like where they're going as a football club because like you always they have this like no Champions League, no Europe, no distraction. Yeah, but they should be doing a lot better. Yeah, well, I, I'm pretty sure last week when we did the top six, I put them in at second because I said I really like their attacking intent. But wow, well, they're, they've they're just got, <laughs> yeah, they just they second. killed me there, isn't? It? I mean. <laughs> That's that's a bizarre result, um, and like you said, you just got to question a few things there. Like, what's what, yeah, what what's the what's the end game here? Like you said, you've got no distractions um, to go two 0 down to to Hull, getting towards the business end of the season. Uh, disappointing. I yeah, I, I can't put my finger on it really. So maybe I'm starting to reconsider why why did I put them second? I, I mean, when when they are when they're on song and they attack. They just look unstoppable, but they just They've seem to that, have these um, lapses in them every like three or four weeks where they just like don't turn up. It's and, like Arsenal. Well, and it's strange that it seems to have like carried over from managers because obviously, yeah. you know, the Brendan Rodgers era had a little bit of that as well. And I guess so did the Rafa Benitez era. Um, and now it's come Klopp and it's happening again. I think in his defense, like he hasn't had too long to like rebuild the team. Yeah. So I think a lot of the players are still there. So, I mean, I'd give him another 18 months to see what oh, he does. Of course. I mean, for on. how far they've come this season already, I think you've got to give them credit and maybe well, you'll be you, asking them. You see on bit- Twitter, and obviously Twitter's like a boiling pot of stupidity, but like you see Klopp out hashtags all the time. It's just like managers don't get any time to gel no. or like settle anymore. It's no. Just- and then, you know, that's the competitiveness of the Premier League is that you will cop a few results like that. But that's then the difference between a team like a Chelsea and, and the rest is that Chelsea don't slip up. And, and City have slipped up a number of times like have, that to, yeah. to lower teams. Um, I told you that Brazilian striker was someone to watch, right? He's he's come in and he's like scored twice again yeah, against yeah. Swansea. Like, yeah, he's a big deal. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's the difference. But too little too late probably for City. Um, I think they'll get second. I still think that. Um, I said that when we were doing the predictions. But yeah, they're not going to catch Chelsea. It's just a... It'd be interesting how they go on the um, Champions League. Yeah. 
uh, and that and that's been their other sort of Achilles, isn't it? That it they've has, never yeah. done anything in the in the Champions League. If um, only they were like Arsenal and had the success that Arsenal that, did in the Champions League. Yeah, that's right. Those <laughs> those you know quarterfinals or whatever every week in week out, year yep. in year out. But uh, I think the other talking point is is uh, Man United and Leicester. Wow. Yeah. Is Leicester getting relegated? I think so. Uh, yeah. It's it's looking pretty dire now. They're only a point above. Yeah, so Hull and Hull, Hull in great form. Yeah, Hull picked up the points there. Um, that would have been worrying. Um, Crystal be Palace honest, got the point. Yeah, Crystal Palace got smoked. They um, Sunderland. It was funny. The, um, Allardyce went back to his old club and just got demolished. Yeah, yeah. And Sunderland and, put four past him. Well, and that's like you said. So Sunderland are now. Uh, 19, 19, Crystal Palace 19, Hull 20, Swansea 21, Leicester 21, Middlesbrough 21. So, so there's really six teams in there. Just a gut feeling, like from the games I've watched, I don't think Swansea or Hull are getting relegated. I think, like, um, Sigurdsson, um, they've got players that are scoring goals, and I, their manager, especially with um, Hull, uh, what's his name, Marco Silva, I think, um, he looks very yeah. good. Yeah, and I just don't see either club going down, which means that one of Leicester... Middlesbrough, Bournemouth are, are going to fall into wow. this. I feel like yeah, one of them are going to fall. I really hope it's not Leicester, just because so it, that it doesn't tarnish their 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 win in the league. And I don't think it should. No, it um, but even if they went down, I don't think it tarnishes what they did. But I think um, the fall from grace is quite extraordinary. It is, and that just shows you how tough the the, the Premier League is. But yeah. They they've got a massive fight on their hands now, and I they do, yeah. I don't know what they're going to do about it because it's not it's not getting any easier, and they're just not scoring goals. They're not, yeah, that's right. They're not scoring goals, and they're just not playing the way they used to, or at least they're not. Or, or teams have just found them out now. Um, the party boss has definitely gone home. There's no Vardy goals. Yeah, and and look, they've copped forty one. Yeah, they've copped forty one. Middlesbrough, who are on equal points just above them, have only copped twenty seven. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's yeah. damning. Yeah, it I is, mean, yeah. negative 17 goal difference for Leicester. And, and the bottom two teams, Palace is negative 13, Sunderland negative 18. So, yeah. uh, based on form, I think their goal difference is the teams below them are going to improve yeah, quite quickly. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's sad for Leicester if they go down. Um, but, you know, that brings about that whole, um, you know, question like, would you rather win it and then go down or would you rather finish fourth every year? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Then, oh, well, if you're talking about Arsenal, for, yeah. I wouldn't want to go down. Um, you, because you, I think the, the ridicule on like anything would be like not worth the title win. But if you're saying like, would you rather win once and then miss Champions League for two years or three oh, years? Yeah. I would. But, but look, um, and even to go down, teams bounce back. I mean, look, probably yeah, looks like, like Newcastle dude, will be back again. Imagine if, like, if Man United got relegated or Liverpool, like, you seriously would never hear the end of it, no matter what you did after the fact. Yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, it'd and, be something that would stick to a club for 100 years. Well, and yeah, I mean, look, the relegation is is, is tough to, to bear, but winning a title is, is something else. Well, you, you saw know, Chelsea, and, right? They um finished 10th. Yeah. And then they're at top, clearly. And I mean, um... Conte, yeah, he's like hasn't done too much in terms of transfers. He's just like got a, a clear focus on his tactics. He's just he's, not being Mourinho has yeah, sort of been the difference not, there. <laughs> not tearing his team apart. Not being a dick he seems to have done the, the done the trick there for for Conte. So and um, Conte, the um, you know DM from Leicester, the French yeah, guy, he's that. been like a revelation. Like the the, the thing that he's going to win two titles back to back in two different teams. Like, yeah, wow. And, and must be one of the best teams in the world, and that that must maybe be the the biggest loss for Leicester. Then maybe oh, losing definitely. him because he yeah. was sort of like that that critical player in in that central midfield, really breaking up the play. So maybe that was one of their big um, things that hurt them this season. But they're they're in all sorts of bother. Man United, like uh, I've been talking them up recently. They look all right. Um, they've been quiet. They're, they're, they've been quiet um, which is interesting for a um, Mourinho team because he's normally um, the most biggest loudmouth in the, the schoolyard. That's right. Yeah, it's funny you listen to his um, post game conferences. He still tries to um, spark that debate, but people seem to be people like yeah, him. whatever. Yeah, because <laughs> he's not he's not in the, the mix uncle anymore. That's just yeah, like half racist. Yeah, he, and he's not. Yeah, and he's not in the mix. If he was top of the ladder, maybe people would listen. But at the end of the day, they're like whatever, Man United is sixth. But 
I think that's actually helping them now. Um, yeah, that they're, 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 they're picking up points and they're, they're, they're hanging around. They've lost two times too. So, yeah. I mean, they're like doing better than pretty much most teams in the league. That's outside right. Outside of like Spurs and Chelsea. That's right. And look, they're only a point behind Liverpool and two behind Arsenal. So Third best top, defensive record. Yeah, top four is not out of the question. No, um, and, and that's one of the interesting things you, you bring up a few times is the question of perception Yeah. Um, that, you know, you'd say, oh, you know, oh, Man United are having a shocking season and Liverpool are having a great season. And it's like, well, there's only a point difference between them. Exactly. Um, and like yeah. I said, Man United have actually had the fewest losses. So um, I think they're, they're quietly going about their business, Man United, and Arsenal Maybe need to, to be with worried. The goals. Like they're not as flashy. Even well, that's it. Yeah. That, well, that's what I'm saying. When, when Liverpool um, have those games where they just on fire, like it gets people worked up and, and does, going yeah. because the atmosphere and the goals and the way they go about those goals is just unbelievable and so it gets talked about um, but then what doesn't get talked about is the 2-0 to Hull um, yeah, so yeah. and, and United have been pretty good at avoiding those kind of results so full credit to them I think they, they, yeah, they, you, they're doing all right Everton right I mean they're like quietly going about their business they're within striking range of like a Europa spot at least yeah so yeah, I mean, don't and, discredit them yeah um, what do you? Let's. We normally talk about the top teams and predictions. Let's just quickly go through the 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 big games in the bottom end of the table. The biggest one for me, Swansea versus Leicester. Yeah. In cool. um in Wales, I feel like Swansea are going to win, and it's going to be interesting because they win, they go above them, they drop Leicester down to at least seventeenth. Yep. Um, Hull play Arsenal. Could wow. be interesting. Yep. Hull's in good form, but it is at the Emirates Stadium, so yep. you expect Arsenal to bounce back. Uh, yeah, you'd think so. I mean, this is the kind of game, yeah, Arsenal will bounce back and, and you know, 2-0 or something like that. You would you think, think. So. You would think. What, you, what about Sunderland at home to Southampton after beating Palace 4-0? And you've got Stoke versus Crystal Palace who just lost 4-0. Yeah, wow. Well, the th- there's a, like you said, look, Swansea Leicester is huge. Um, I think that is a, that is a massive game. Um, huge game. Unfortunately, it's on the Monday. It's like a late, a really bad time. But. Yeah, uh, look, I, that, yeah, that's that's just going to be a, a massive game. I can't. I, I think you're right. Swansea six pointer. Yeah, and look, I think you're right. Swansea have some quality. Um, yeah, Swansea has some individual. Yeah, he yeah. he's been the one, and they do have some individual quality. And I just think Leicester don't have anything else really they don't have a plan b they don't have any no. depth on the bench they've got they can't they can't change things really um and that's that's costing them they're just that one trick pony um it worked once it's not working again and if i think swansea might pip them here and that's going to be huge um especially when you look at the other games like i mean sunderland they could pick up points from Southampton at home, considering their form. Yep, yep, that's um, yeah, that's one. And I there. think Crystal Palace can bounce back against Stoke. I expect Stoke to win, but I mean, like those games are right in the balance. Yeah, they are. And and look, the other one obviously is uh, Liverpool Tottenham. I mean, that's it's huge. Yeah. That's huge. I don't know how you see that one panning out. Based on form, you'd have to think Spurs. But yeah. I mean, at Anfield, Liverpool are very good in the big games. Um. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I'll, I'll go a draw because it's a safe option, but I wouldn't be surprised if um Spurs edge them. And I think if Spurs do edge them, then uh, I think they might finish above Arsenal. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you, like Spurs are another one. They, they're not really being talked about, but once again, they're they're, they're second. Their defense is fantastic. Like Hugo Lloris is yeah. like underappreciated so much in like the media. He's yeah. just not spoken about, but he is so good. Like people always like joke about how he's at this like club that like he's sort of like co- uh, coasting along. Like yeah. he's this world class player sitting in this average team, yeah, and he has no ambition to go higher. But I think potentially, like maybe he sees what this club can become. The, yeah, and look, I they, think they bundled their transfer strategy really badly. I think if they bought better, they'd be ch- uh, challenging Chelsea right now. But even to the credit of their defense, like look what they're doing. Well, look, I mean, and that's what I thought after last season that they would take it to that next level, and they haven't. But look, they've no. still got Harry Kane there. He's he's still young. He's someone that you can really build a side around. Like you said, Hugo Lloris is there. Um, Song Hwang Min. Um, yeah, I think he's young. been red hot Toby for them. Wild has been good. Yeah, and uh, you know. Deli Christian Deli Ali, Christian Eriksen, like they are just they're a top side, and again they they don't get the hype, but no, they don't. second season in a row they're second. Um, they I don't know. I think they can take Liverpool here. 
Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. They've been red hot. They've been red hot at the moment. Um, I, it's going to be a fascinating game, really. I think it's just going to be all out attack from from both sides, probably. Um, but like I said, Tottenham have got a better defence. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm tipping Tottenham for that one, I reckon. I think the safe option for me is just a draw because I think Anfield is a different beast for Liverpool. But um, true. If, yeah, it'll be a close, very close game. It's gonna be a ripper game. I, I think this is a ripper week of of headline of um, matches. Actually, there yeah, should six be quite points a few everywhere. Headlines. I yeah. guess because end of the season, right? It produces them. Yeah, it's gonna be huge. Um, I think we will leave it there. This is probably our longest podcast. We're yeah. like pushing the eighty minute mark almost. Well, look, if the FFA would just you know calm <laughs> calm things down and and you know leave us alone, I think we could we could cut down the time. But you know we got to fight the good fight. We, so, we got to fight the good fight. Someone yeah. has to talk about That's it. That's right. We've, we've taken the case. So. Yeah, we'll take it upon ourselves. I think. Well, thank you for joining me once again, Eden. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. You can find us at www.theaverageaustralian.com and we're also on iTunes, uh, Patreon, SoundCloud, YouTube, and I'm sure somewhere else we don't know. And uh, All thanks, over the internet. All over the internet, even the back pages. Um, so thank you, guys, and we will be back this time next week. Uh, until then, bye-bye. See ya. See ya.